Yeah, so when I finished um, school in CBS Carlo, I decided to go full time, uh, spending a lot of time in Croatia training. Uh, since then, I've uh, won a few medals um, under 19 world champion, under 21 world champion. Um, and since I've made the jump from uh, youth sailing to senior sailing, uh, my biggest achievement has been uh, qualifying for the Olympics. So. Talk to us about that change as well. Um, it's a completely different kettle of fish altogether. The step up must be huge. Yeah, it's just like all of the good youth sailors from the last 20 years are in the senior sailors uh, league. Um, so yeah, it's just about managing expectations, knowing that you're not going to be at the top straight away. But uh, if you put in the hard work, you can uh, like you know beat the system and overtake the old guys. And that's the goal for the next few years. Young lad with a lot of confidence going to the Olympics, yeah? Uh, a lot of confidence. Uh, I just want to do my best there. Um, the real goal for me from the long term, uh, from way before, has been Tokyo. Um, so this Olympics is just is just a bonus. Um, I'm the youngest guy out there, uh, the youngest Irish uh, uh, Olympic sailor, um, and uh, I'm just hoping to get some, maybe win a race. Um, but some anywhere inside the top 25 would be super result for me at this stage. Yeah, and talk to us about that from the time you, you knew, obviously, oh my God, I've qualified for the Olympics. Um, what happens then in your head? Like, what are you thinking? Is it sort of daunting? Are you going, wow, there's a huge amount of weight on your shoulders as well? Tell me what was going through your head. For me, it was a whale off my shoulders. Um, I never really imagined what it would be like if I didn't qualify, because in my head it was always Rio, Rio. Um, but my Olympic trials was a crazy time. I uh, broke my shoulder before the first trials event, um, about five weeks before, so it was just damage control. The second one, there was complications as well. I missed a flight, jet lagged, and the third event, I was uh, food poisoned. So it was uh, just a crazy relief to know that after all that happened, I could still be the best in Ireland and uh, able to represent Ireland and Carlo at the Olympics. That's it as well, and I'll talk to you more about that in a second. The event that you're taking part in in the Olympics is? It's the laser class of the single-handed men's dinghy. Um, there's 50 of us going to be there. Um, arguably the most competitive. Um, it's like the most popular boat in the world, pretty much, dinghy boat. Uh, so, yeah, really excited. So, Finn, talk to me about training uh, coming up to an Olympics. Is it pretty much more of the same or is there anything extra or anything that you're concentrating on? Um, I guess most of the year we're sailing just to get better, training to get better in our technique, in our boat speed, in our fitness. Um, once you get into Olympic season, like Rio is the only thing that matters now, we're going to Rio. Just training in Rio, learning the tides there, the how the land affects the wind, because there's loads of mountains everywhere. Um, all the little idiosyncrasies about um, sailing in Rio, which is very, very hard. Um, so that's the only change that's been since I've qualified, that it's all been Rio, rather than improving and getting better in general. So you have to get out there a little bit earlier and get the feel for the place first? Yeah, well, I've spent about uh, six weeks there training in the last year. Um, so I go out there only a few days before all the hard work's been done um, just a few days before just to get my Olympic boat and uh, settle in a little bit yeah we've been spending hours and hours um, and, and lots of money and hard work in uh, trying to figure out everything we can about Rio um, the different depths in the water makes differences um, it's, there's lots of mountains around Rio so knowing if there's a cloud coming over this mountain, does it affect, you know, is it something that happens all the time? So we just need to know the things that are uh, are happening regularly so that uh, it, on race day, if that, if we see something happening on the water or in the, in the clouds, um, we can react to it and not be blown away by it, you know.